Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to stand out on social media and be seen as the experts that they really are. The latest updates and trends from the social media space presented by me, your social media strategist and coach. Now, let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. I am back with another solo episode after a few interviews, and I'm actually already planning episodes for the beginning of next year, so 2024, which is crazy to me. But at the same time, it also makes sense because in December we have friends from Belgium coming over and we will be doing a three-ish week road trip with them through New Zealand. So I won't be doing any work during that time. So I want to be prepared so that you can still listen to some episodes while I'm road tripping and I don't have to bring my mic. So that feels really good to have prepared or at least scheduled most of the episodes that are going to go online um, Yeah, in that period of time. As I was looking through the episodes and kind of thinking of topics that I could talk about, I noticed that I actually never really talked about how I became a social media strategist. And I don't necessarily mean how I made the switch from mainly doing social media management to then going into the more strategic aspect of social media marketing, but just the whole story, like how I even started to be interested in marketing and all these kind of things. So I felt in this episode, I would just talk a little bit about how that all came to be and give you a bit of an insight into my education, my experience as a marketer and record it a little bit for myself as well to set a milestone or at least um, mark this time in my life with an episode and a little bit of reflection on the past. So I think it all started as a child um, because I always loved reading and I always loved writing. I would write my own little stories on my computer and then not never really do anything with it. But I really loved the process of writing and thinking of stories. So from a very young age, I want to say like primary school, obviously ever since I knew how to read and write, I think I always had the idea that I would be a journalist in the future. Um, I always really liked reading uh, articles and stuff like that. I mean, not as a child. <laughs> I was not that, that much of a nerdy child. But then later on, and yeah, I just really liked the idea of researching things, reporting about things, talking about a variety of things in writing and yeah, storytelling in a way. So telling stories that I came across in my life. The second job aspiration that I always had was becoming an interior designer. So it was either becoming a journalist or an interior designer. I also once um, said architect, but I kind of always meant interior design. And how I knew I wanted to be an interior designer is because I loved playing Sims and I still love playing Sims. And um, that is one of my hobbies. And I always love to build the houses. And once the house was finished, I would always like close the game or be like, oh, now I have to actually play with the family. Like, oh, how annoying. And it's still kind of my favorite part of playing The Sims. Obviously, I build the house. I show it to my boyfriend, who's always super interested in um, knowing what house I have built this time and what things I have put into this house because he already knows the kind of things I will put in every single one of my Sims builds. Anyways, I digress. Um, so that was always, <laughs> those were always my two um, aspirations, either journalist or interior designer. But then at like age 13 or 14, I had to choose which high school I wanted to attend. And I don't know if this is the same in other countries, but at least in Italy, especially in the region where I'm from, we have different high schools that specialize in a set of subjects. So first you go to primary school, then you go to middle school, and then your last five years of school will be at what we call high school. Interestingly enough, also in Italy, we 
graduate school at 19, not like most other European countries at 18. But that's another story. So I had to decide at that age kind of already in which direction I wanted my life to take. And I found it quite hard to decide on one thing because I had quite a lot of interest as a child. So my parents had the idea of sending me for an aptitude test where they would determine what skills I have, what personality traits I have, and then like combine the two and find what high school they would think would suit me best. Already back then, loved a little bit of data to back my decisions on. <laughs> but basically, I did this aptitude test at, I think, age 13 or something. And um, what they found was that I should go into the creative field, that I was also really, really good with languages and also the kind of human studies or art studies or tourism. So that was really interesting to me because we have these this variety of high schools that you can attend. And in a way, they also determine what you're going to study afterwards at university if you would want to go on and do that. So we have high schools that focus on languages, we have high schools that teach you business in a way, we have scientific high schools where you have lots of maths and physics and chemistry and all these things, you have tourism schools where you literally have classes in cooking, in waiting, in I don't know, being a receptionist, um, all these kind of things that you do in tourism or in a hotel. And then we have more social schools where you, yeah, I don't know, go more into the social work field afterwards. So like working with people, working with people with disabilities, that kind of stuff. So there is a variety of schools to choose from. And as I said, it also kind of determines where you're going to go afterwards. So I did this test and interestingly enough, two things that also came out through this test was that I was really good at consulting and that I really enjoyed that as well. So basically showing and teaching people how to do things, uh, which is literally what I am doing now in my job. And also that I had entrepreneurial interests, which is not something that surprised me because my family on my dad's side, they are very entrepreneurial, starting with my grandparents who ever since I can think have run a local supermarket. So they have always had their own business. My uncle has his own business. My cousins have their own businesses. And yeah, everyone is very entrepreneurial um, and trying to have their own businesses. So that side of my family has never really been a regular employee. So I guess um, that also shaped me in, in that sense of entrepreneurial thinking, but also just the interest in running your own business. So yeah, uh, I did this test and I decided that I was going to attend the high school that focuses on languages. To give you a bit of an idea of what kind of subjects we had there, we had history, which was my all-time favorite subject. We had Latin for five years. And we had, um, of course, we also had things like maths, uh, chemistry, but that was like two hours a week or something. So really not a lot. And the rest was all languages. So we had um, German and Italian. I'm gonna explain why in a second. Uh, we had English, we had French and we had Spanish. So <laughs> lots of languages and other things like art, uh, like two hours a week of art history, for example, as well. But yeah, that, that those were the kind of subjects that we that we had at school that are different to other schools that have a stronger focus on maths, for example, which our school really didn't have. Why I'm saying German and Italian and how I actually already knew from a young age that I wanted to go into languages or that I was really good at learning languages was because the region that I come from, which is called South Tyrol, we grew up bilingual. So... Up until 1918, we were actually Austria, or part of Austria. And then in 1919, after the First World War, we became Italy. So ever since then, people also speak Italian now in our region and we grow up bilingual. So you would use both languages every day 
when you go into a shop, you usually don't know if you're gonna speak in Italian or in German. So it's kind of a bit of a getting to know the people and seeing what language they prefer. Um, so you get quite good at spotting who might be a native Italian speaker or who might be a native German speaker. But usually, or in theory at least, everyone should be able to speak both languages fluently. Anyways, so I started learning Italian at the age of six or seven years old, um, so in primary school, and I always found that I learned languages much quicker than other students in my class. So I already knew that languages was one of my stronger skills, so that made sense for me to go uh, and study them at school as well. And next to my interest in languages, as I already mentioned, one of my favorite subjects was history. And what I also really found interesting was psychology next to it. So we had a lot of um, philosophy in school as well. So we would learn to um, think critically, to argument, to negotiate in a way, and to just think about thinking in a way. So <laughs> sounds very fancy now and very elaborate. Um, but yeah, we basically learned um, a lot of um, philosophy as well. And at the same time, I noticed a strong interest in psychology. So I always wanted to understand why people were acting a certain way. And that's, I think, why I found history so interesting, because I always wanted to know why something happened or why people acted that way or why did this person do this in history and kind of understand human behavior. And then I also always wanted to know how you could influence people to do certain things that you wanted them to do, for example, by your products. And this is gonna sound really weird um, and I hope you understand what I mean, but I was always really interested in the World War II time period, especially around Nazis in Germany, because I could never understand how you could get so many people to do what you wanted or to kind of repress so many people or brainwash so many people into doing the thing that you wanted. So I always had a special interest in yeah, human behavior, if you want. And I even wrote my thesis for high school on the Nazi time in Germany, in particular about women protesting against the regime. So that just as a side note, um, but that was that was my special interest back then, a little bit weird, uh, probably for like a um, teenager. But anyways, um, that was my special interest. And I always found it fascinating to understand human psychology. Once high school was about to be done, I obviously had to decide what I wanted to do afterwards. And because I found high school quite a good fit for me or the school that I chose uh, quite a good fit for me, I decided to do a second aptitude test to just understand how I had developed and how uh, my skills or what my skills would be um, good for at university. So I did a second one at the same place. And what resulted from that test was that I should either do entrepreneurial studies, languages again, or social studies. And the two studies that they actually recommended was either international business or marketing or journalism. So that was really interesting for me to see that um, the journalism was still in there. And um, yeah, I had to make a, a decision if I wanted to pursue my childhood dream of becoming a journalist or um, going into business, which was my, my interest back then as well already. And I think my parents, and they have told me this as well, they didn't expect me to go into business. They always kind of thought I wouldn't be made for the business world or I don't know they were quite surprised because um, we also have high schools that prepare you to study business and I obviously didn't choose that one my brother did so they were quite surprised that I suddenly wanted to go into business but they obviously supported me and the decision was made but the thing was I knew I wanted to study and I also knew what 
but not exactly where. There were a few universities in Europe that I was eyeing up and I couldn't make a decision. And at the same time, I also felt like I wanted to take some time off after high school to, you know, find myself. <laughs> not that I did, but, you know, just to take some time off and reflect a little bit and maybe do some work and then um, go on to university the year after. So what I did was I took a year off and traveled to New Zealand with a friend and um, that's where my love for New Zealand comes from but to finance that as a 19 year old um, I first had to do some work and I started to work in an apple factory for like four months or something during summer. My region South Tyrol we are known for our apples so a lot of our desserts contain apples. My grandfather has apple trees. So for all my life, I have had lots of apples. <laughs> and one of my earliest memories is from when we used to make apple juice together as a family, like the whole family, all of the cousins, aunts, uncles. We would come together at my grandparents' place and just make apple juice for like a week or a weekend and then we would have our own homemade apple juice for like the rest of the year so apples were always a big part of uh, my childhood so it only felt natural to then go and work in an apple factory my cousin worked there as well a few of his friends a few of my friends so um, it was actually quite a lot of fun but at the same time it was also quite hard work because we worked long hours we had to stand 90 percent of the time we packaged apples so you had to lift crates you had to work on the machines and yeah it was it was hard hard earned money i would say after a few weeks i started to dream of apples i Whenever I closed my eyes, I would see apples uh, uh, turned in front of my eyes. But yeah, we also did shift work that started at like six in the morning and I still had to drive there. And yeah, it was it was hard work um, for sure. But I also earned like 5,000 euros in four months, which was really good money for a 19 year old. Um, that's probably like 9,000 New Zealand dollars or something. So that was a nice um, bunch of money that also allowed me to book flights to New Zealand and, and like travel around there for a while. But the thing was, and this is why I'm telling you about the Apple factory, um, is that the majority of the people that worked there were students or um, yeah, people who just worked there for a season or a few months. But there were also a few people, a few women that work there full time the whole year round. And I don't know, in a way, and again, this is going to sound stupid, but in a way that kind of confirmed to me that I wanted to go study and do something with my life and maybe start my own business or at least work in a bigger business because I didn't want to work in the Apple factory for the rest of my life, as bad as it sounds. But that was really a bit of a reality check for me to be like, yeah, no, you're gonna, you're gonna go and study, learn a proper job, and not work at the Apple factory for the rest of your life. So first I went to New Zealand, had an amazing time there. And when I came back, I moved to Vienna in Austria to study business there. And I have to say, in the beginning, I didn't really exactly know that I wanted to go into marketing. We had these like four initial exams that were like microeconomics, uh, law, maths, and one fourth one that I yeah, can't even remember anymore. So that was probably not really important. Um, maybe statistics or something. I don't know. Anyways, we had these four initial exams that everyone had to pass to go into the like main part of the studies. And I have to say, coming from a background that was not a business background, so at high school we didn't learn anything about business like economics or um, yeah, how to run a business, accounting, the kind of math stuff that you needed to know. I found it quite hard in the beginning and I studied a lot. I passed all of my exams, but I did have to study a lot. And I noticed like, okay, this is something new for me and I do have to put in some work here. And then I came into the main part of the studies and I had marketing as a course for the first time. And that is where 
my love for marketing started because I absolutely adored going to the lessons. It was just like, it felt so much fun and like I didn't have to study for it because everything was just so interesting to me. So I, you know, looked up stuff myself and yeah, it just felt really easy. And then at the exam, I probably had like three mistakes or something out of 50 questions because I was just so interested in the thing and studied a lot for it. So I, you know, because yeah, I was just super into it and it felt really, really easy. So that was the first time that I was like, hmm, marketing could potentially be where I end up. And um, yeah, that was the first time I that came into my mind. And it also made sense because we talked a lot about psychology and human behavior as well. So it was like, oh yeah, this is really what I'm interested in, in learning. And then um, in my second year, we had to choose our specialization. So we all had our like general classes together, but then... We all had to choose uh, specializations. So you had from all different subjects like logistics, HR, finance, all these kind of things. You had specializations. And all out of all of these, I chose international marketing management because, again, we had languages in there. We had French and English, or that's at least what I chose. And um, service and digital marketing. That was my second one. And that was just the best time. That was my favorite time at university because... I was in a room with people who were all interested in learning more about marketing and it felt so nice to just chat marketing all day long, um, read up on marketing cases, uh, come up with campaigns and stuff like that all day long. So that was really fun. And that's also where I got into service marketing the first time. So we learned about what makes services different to marketing products. We learned about how we could market them effectively. And yeah, just learned a lot about digital marketing at the same time, like how Google ads work, how um, what kind of things you have to measure in digital marketing. Uh, we learned the math behind metrics and all these kind of things. So it was a really, really great time. And I took a lot away from that. And I still use quite a lot of that knowledge um, in my day-to-day -day life as a social media strategist now. Even if I sometimes don't realize it, sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah, I just know this. But then I'm actually like, no, I didn't know this before I went to university. <laughs> this is really something I learned there, this kind of skill. We also did lots of market research courses there. So that was one of my specialties as well, that um, I'm really good at setting up surveys and finding out what customers really want. So that was uh, another thing that I learned. And yeah, then I had my semester abroad in Holland, in Maastricht, and I went back to Vienna to graduate, and that was that. Then I decided to go to Belgium, live in Belgium, where my boyfriend had been living at the time. He is from Belgium, so that's why. And I enrolled in a master program there. I studied business economics with, again, a focus on marketing. So that's uh, how that all came to be. But then after the studies, I, of course, had to start working because the bills don't pay themselves. So I applied for a lot of internships, uh, mostly with companies that, you know, the kind of companies that come to university and introduce themselves. And they're always trying to get new graduates to work at their place Um One of the companies that I seriously considered and that I actually really wanted to get into what was McKinsey Co. So that's one of these um, classic consulting companies uh, where you work with clients in all different kinds of industries um, and consult on their marketing, I guess. So um, that was one of the companies that I applied for for an internship. I even went to one of their info evenings and chatted with a few consultants and they told me all about their lifestyle. And I was like, oh, yeah, this sounds like something I want to do. Now, thinking back, I'm like, no way. <laughs> this sounds really, really annoying, actually, because what they usually do is for especially like the ones that work internationally or at least within Europe they would live in a hotel for like Monday to Friday uh, work in someone else's business uh, consult with them 
and then be home for like Saturday and Sunday or at least a little bit of Sunday because obviously you have to fly out again on Monday. So they made it sound like the ultimate lifestyle. Like, oh, it's so cool. And you get to stay at hotels and, you know, like you get to be at clients' offices and stuff. And I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. But now thinking back, I'm like, no way I would want that to be my life. So I guess it was good that they didn't accept me for the internship. But I also applied for a lot of other companies that are known to have really good marketing departments like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, uh, Mars, L'Oreal. All of these companies came to our university to introduce themselves, both in Vienna and in uh, Belgium as well. And yeah, that, that, that was kind of the dream to work for these companies for a lot of my um, colleagues at uni. So I applied for those roles as well but didn't get into any of these companies. And I think my parents also, to a certain degree, always saw me working in a big company, like as a marketing manager in the future, in one of these big corporations. And I think for a long time, that is what I wanted as well, because I thought that was the only way that it could go when you have studied marketing. So that was kind of always the ambition. But then I started working at a market research company where we did mystery shopping. If you're not familiar with mystery shopping, what you basically do is big companies would come in and they would say, hey, we're wanting to learn more about our customers. And we would then find people who would pretend to be customers and either check out a service or buy a product and just um, fill out reviews for us. So. I did that. Um, I was responsible for the German market, but in the end did basically any market that, that we had projects in, like Italy often. I also worked with people in Singapore, with people in Iceland, with people in um, New Caledonia, like anywhere in the world. We literally um, had to find people. But then at the same time, because I was probably the youngest person there and because I had a marketing degree, they asked me to start managing their social media pages because they were like, you know, we need more mystery shoppers and we need to ramp up our social media marketing. So I was like, okay, I can give it a try. Had never done it before. And I was super enthusiastic about yeah, doing it, about working on their socials, but it it turned out to be pretty difficult because we were never allowed to name any of our clients. So we couldn't say, hey, we have uh, mystery visits for this company available. We could only say that on our portal, but not on our socials um, because of confidentiality reasons. So it was really hard to actually get people to sign up. And a lot of people also thought that, yeah, we were scammers <laughs> because it sounds too good to be true that you can, you know, go do a test drive with a luxury car and then like get paid for it. So a lot of people always thought we were not for real. So it was really difficult to actually do something uh, for the social media marketing. But that's how it all started out. And that was also probably the first moment that I realized that I didn't really enjoy the corporate environment. Not so much because of my colleagues, they were all really nice and we also never really had any, you know, like um, office drama or anything go on. But at the same time, I commuted for two and a half hours each day by train and then I had to cycle back home from the train station and it was just really, yeah, it was a lot of effort and it, it burned me out to a certain extent. And I just realized that I had more stress than before, ever before. And only with the pandemic, I then realized how much of a toll it was taking on um, my body as well. So with the pandemic, obviously, we didn't have any work for a few months because people couldn't go into businesses and do the test drives or uh, buy products anymore. They weren't allowed. So we also didn't have any work. And that's when I started to um, manage social media pages of other businesses. And I really enjoyed it. So in September of 2020, I decided to officially set up my business and um, make it my side hustle. And I have to say, in the first few months, I didn't have any clients, but also 
mainly because I didn't put a lot of effort into it because I was like, you know, I have my full-time job. If this doesn't work out, then, you know, <laughs> I still have that income. So I didn't really make a lot of effort. But then once we moved to New Zealand in 2021, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to look for another full-time job. I'm going to make this work. And I did. I managed social media pages for clients. I think I got my first client a month after I started my business. So that was really quick. And I also really enjoyed that. Uh, had a few different clients, worked on lots of different accounts, um, started coaching people as well. And then last year in 2022, I got my first strategy, only strategy um, project which was with Matter Beauty, and I just loved it. The kind of work that we did together for the launch or the rebrand, the relaunch of the brand was just, I just loved it. And I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do in my day-to-day -day life. And at the same time, I also noticed that the results were much better than if I had just gone in and made all the content for them and not taken her story into the content or yeah it was just much better to combine both of our expertise together instead of just me coming in or just her doing their socials on her own so that was the first real I would say consulting project or strategy strategy project and that was also a moment where I sat down and for the first time probably ever in my life I guess I really thought, what do I want to do? And not in a way like you do when you're a child, you're like, oh yeah, I want to be a journalist or an interior designer. But really, yeah, like thinking about it, how do I want to spend my day and not think about it in a way that society is also telling me to spend my day um, or that Instagram is telling me like with the boss babe, um, hustle culture, which was something that I fell into a little bit in the beginning of my business. But yeah, just thinking about how do I want to spend my day? How do I want to work with clients? And how can I help my clients in the best way? Because if I'm happy about how I spend my day, that also gets my clients better results because I'm not going to feel resentful when I work with them. And they also get the best version of myself. So I sat down and I reflected. I started to work with a business coach to prepare my rebrand. And in February of this year, finally did the big reveal of my new branding and the new direction that I wanted to go in. And now I'm doing this. I'm doing social media strategy. I help people with their launches. I help people that are feeling stuck, that are wanting to take their business in a different direction or not. But what they all have in common is that they want to use social media marketing to reach the right clients and to sign more clients. So this is how all of this came to be. I hope you enjoyed this episode, even if it was a little bit different than my usual episodes. I will be back in two weeks time with another interview. I won't tell you yet who it is with. But it's going to be really, really exciting and hopefully very interesting for you as well. So thanks for tuning in today into this special episode. I hope you got to know me a little bit better, um, have understood a little bit more where I'm coming from. And I hope to hear you next time when it's again time to talk socials and not just about myself. 